With uh, the role that we have with X-Forces Enterprise, we're obviously helping people set up in self-employment, search, uh, search their own career path, if you will. Um, and one of the questions they always have is around work-life balance. I think to uh, you, you, you can't you can't do it like it's not a process. It, it, right. you, you, you've got to enjoy everything, mm. and it might be that you're one of those people who enjoys work uh, rather more than others. So don't yeah. feel guilty about that. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, if if for work is like for me, the work is also my hobby. Yeah, actually, that's that's a very good thing. Um, so you, you've obviously worked for the family business, owned the family business and worked for the family business for a long time and had many challenges, I assume, along those uh, or during those years. What, what, what's the one thing that stuck out for you as sort of the biggest challenge in, in being an entrepreneur? Uh, probably the most challenging thing is when I realised actually it wasn't working that well. And that's when I, I, I had a period of quite severe stress and right. uh, depression. Yeah. And, Another story, but uh, mm. I uh, happens to a lot of people, and that's yeah. some, something you, sh you, sh you should talk about. And uh, if it happens to you, it's good to talk. Well, you, you, well, you, you, I, you've got to have those sounding boards, you've got yeah, to have those releases. Right. I've had quite bad times of that, mm. but yeah. now uh, I'm very open about it. In fact, at our leadership right. course, I play a film in which my, my my late wife reveals during a television program that right. I had this stress. and uh, So I play that so people know about it. And, yeah. and that works quite well and it, it does get people to uh, come and say, do you know that's happened to me? And so we'll go to the doctor. Because eventually the great thing about it is it does disappear. Yeah. And you, you mentioned to me previously that you interview for personality. Uh, well, you, you, you can't run a business the way we do, giving people the freedom to do their job the way they want if you haven't got the right people in the first place. Mm. I mean, you can teach people with personality how to cut keys, but if you have a very grumpy cobbler, you can't change his personality. <laughs> and uh, so we've, yeah, we, we just are looking for people who are positive, who are... I, I mean, one of the most important things you've got to do in your running a business is to look after your people and make sure they they've got a great workplace. Mm. And the vital thing about a great workplace is to make sure they're working alongside people who love the business as much as they do. Now, social business is very important to you, isn't it? We, we support things we can get involved in. And uh, we've developed the scheme for employing ex-offenders, and I do a lot of work with... Uh, because I've... My late wife and I fostered a lot of children, adopted two children. We started to understand about the difficulties that a lot of children have when they're brought up in the care system and the attachments problems they have and, and the need to explain to other people, particularly adopted parents and foster, foster carers, but also people in school, actually extends beyond that. It, it extends to the judges, the magistrates, people working in prison. They should understand why a lot of these people behave the way they do and that what their behaviour is is a form of communication because they, because they haven't had the best, best start in life. They haven't, mm. had, they haven't had a carer who's given them the love and bonding they need early on. Yeah. They go through life not trust, lacking in self-esteem, mm. not trusting other people, not trusting the world, and that mm. comes out. And unless you understand that, you don't know how to look after them. No. And I, I suppose some of those traits as well you can relate to the military community in terms of the uh, the background of some of the recruits that go into uh, some aspects of the military and then also when they're coming out. You are part of a, a very close family yeah. when you're in, in, in the forces and, uh, and actually when you come out it can change, it's quite difficult to, to cope with the, the, the sense of loss that mm. you are, you haven't got the very yeah. people are close to you. And yeah, I can totally understand that people leaving the forces sometimes have particular challenges mm. that they need, where they need help. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to me that if you're wanting to start off a business, make sure it's something you really want to do before right. you, I mean, don't, the, the order is have a hobby, have something you're good at, something that seems to work that other people want to pay money for. And then, a couple of things, you will come to the stage where you need to employ someone else because you can't do it all on your own. Mm -hmm. That's very critical that you pick the right person. And you might not get it right. <laughs> if you've got it wrong, change them. And the third advice I'd have is keep looking at your bank account. Make sure that you are in control of the cash. 
Sir John, thank you very much indeed for your time. I think on that note, we can end it here. Keep control of that cash. <laughs> thank you very much indeed.